glory, Lord, as we worship you. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Talo da bire, ire lo ba wamba. Talo da bire, ire la to biju kala gadu shalamazi. Moro le ni wajure, mo yalo go. another time another season another 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 place to magnify the lord to glorify him and to exalt his name in the face of whatever and everything that is happening in the nation it is good for us to find time and come together to pray and like we had advertised we're going to have a 10 days program and this is the one it is starting today, day one. And we're looking at 10 days of favor, grace, and mercy. Favor, grace, and mercy. And today we are going to be talking about favor, 
Today we are going to be talking about favor. What kind of favor? We are going to be talking about the uncommon type of favor or the uncommon type kind of favor. And I like us to know that as a nation, we need the favor of God. As an individual, we need favor from God. As a church, we need favor from God. As friends, as families, we need favor from God. Favor is what God alone can give. A lot of people have defined favor and a lot of um, pastors have looked at different meanings of favor. And I just want to let us look at Psalm 102 verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Favor and mercy or grace, they are synonymous. And most times they are used interchangeably. So having mercy and having favor and having grace, it's like talking about one particular thing. So Psalm 102, Verse 13 says, Thou shalt arise, have mercy upon Zion, for it is a set time to favor her. I believe that no matter the problem, the issues that we are experiencing in Nigeria today, our set time for favor has come. Our set time for favor has come. So I speak to us individually, and I speak to us as Nigerians. I speak to us as children of God, according to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. I ask us to arise, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and great darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to our light, and kings to the brightness of our rising. This prophecy very soon will come to pass in our nation Nigeria, and in our lives individually. To arise. To allow God's light to come, to allow the glory of the Lord to be seen, is to accommodate favor from God, is to walk in line with the will of God, is to do that which God has ordained for us as favor. Now, Jesus Christ also in Matthew chapter 2, if you look at verse 1 to 2 and verse 10 to 11, talks about the fact that he found favor when he was born. The star was seen by three men. And when they came, they gave him gifts. They saw the star right from the east, and they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and they fell down, they worshipped him right from his birth. They worshipped him, and they gave him treasures. They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense, they gave him man, as according to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 2 and verse 10 to 11. So Jesus had uncommon favor right from his birth. And for you to have favor, it means that the light of God is shining upon you. For you to have favor, for you to experience favor, it means that you are experiencing the light of God. Amen. You are experiencing the hand of God. You are experiencing the good will of God. Some people would even as far as say that you are experiencing the good eyes of God. God is looking at you favorably. It means that light is shining upon you. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men, so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because a lot of us need for God to shine His light upon our life and upon our good works. Most times you will find out that you spend time trying to do good, and you spend energy, you spend money, you spend resources, and then people don't even see it as good. And sometimes they turn your good to bad. And at the end of the day, it looks like your efforts, your strength, your energy is being wasted. Meanwhile, you are trying to do good. That should not be so. It is not the order that God has ordained it. It is contrary to Matthew 5, 16. God wants us to let our light shine so that our good works will be seen in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
So your light shining for men to see is exactly the will of God. It's what will glorify God and it's what will make him happy according to Matthew 5.16. The Bible makes us know in Daniel chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 that Daniel, then was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel, a thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, we all know that Daniel was among those three or four Hebrew boys that were captured and were taken to captivity and were trained specially in the land of Babylon. So he was brought before the king in Daniel chapter 5. And the king was asking him, whom, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry, I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the God is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Meaning that the king recognized the fact that Daniel has the light of God. I told you that whenever the light of God is in your life, whenever the light of God comes, according to Isaiah 60, that we have read, as I, I arise and shine, it means that God is God's special hand is on you. And when God's special hand is on you, it means that you are experiencing favor, divine favor or uncommon favor. You are experiencing it from God. So the king was telling Daniel, said, I know that you have understanding, you have excellent wisdom. Favor can be defined as an act of kindness. Favor can be defined as an act of kindness. It allows people to obtain those things that they normally or ordinarily did not qualify for. Makes people to receive without asking. You just appear in an office and people start asking you, what can I do for you? They schedule you on an appointment without you even asking for one. They open the doors for you to see the king, the big ones, the presidents, the people in position, without you even making an effort. It is an unsolicited kind of favor when you didn't ask for. Sometimes it is an undeserved kindness. Favor, you can call favor to be an undeserved kindness. You see people cry and say, hey, I don't know what I did you but they bless me, they favor me, or God shine his light upon me. Amen. So favor can be said, it is unsolicited, it can be undeserved. But it's a kindness that is shown to, to one. And I t told you earlier on that when the light of God is shining upon you, then it means the special hand of God is upon you to bring favor to you. And I pray that as you listen to the sound of my voice, that the light of God will shine upon you and special favor will come upon you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In times like this, in this country, we need favor. We need favor. We need favor to be protected, favor to be saved. We need grace. We need the favor of God to turn things around for us. And even though things are topsy top vain, I like the song in my spirit that I can see everything turning around, everything turning around, everything turning around for my good. Things will turn around for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. As you shout a loud amen, things will turn around for your good. Amen. Things will turn around for the good of Nigeria. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So favor is a time for grace. It's a time for divine ability to perform certain things that are beyond human ability, to receive certain help that are beyond human ability. Favor usually opens the doors for outstanding success for supernatural breakthrough. Favor opens the door to things that ordinarily that you cannot get on your own. 
So you can call favor the key. You can call favor the door opener. You can call favor success, the unmerited success. You can call favor supernatural breakthrough. There's hardly anything that you cannot have in a particular area of your life if you have the divine favor of God. No matter the area of your life, once the favor of God is in operation, you will see that nothing, you will not lack anything. Even as a pastor, you can operate in almost the fivefold ministry. Round. You can operate round. Why? Because the hand of God is upon you. The hand of God is upon you and the divine favor of God is at work in your life. When favor is at work in your life, you don't struggle for anything. You see people struggling to make it happen. But the divine favor of God makes it easy for them. Favor makes it easy for a man to be an achiever, an effortless achiever. Child of God, you need that favor to move on as we approach the end of this year. As we are, we are this year that summer look like a, a child with epilepsy. Today the year is well, tomorrow, even academically everything is a mess. You need the favor of God to be extraordinary. And like I told you before, it's still in this kind of year that some people are building houses, some are buying cars in this kind of year. That some people could barely have to eat. It is the divine favor of God. When you come in contact with divine favor, it changes your struggle. It takes away struggle. It makes things to happen easily. For people who have outstanding supernatural breakthrough, do you think it's by their effort? It is by the, the, the favor of God. If there is one thing you should ask God for, if there is one thing you should pray for, child of God, pray for the favor of God, the uncommon favor of God. Jesus had it. David had it. Daniel also had it. And that was why, why he was in the lions, then the lions couldn't eat him. The three Hebrew boys had the divine favor of God, and that's why they could not burn in the fairy furnace. Solomon had divine favor. That was why, in spite of the fact that he was a child of compromise, he still had wisdom that surpasses all understanding. If there is one thing you should ask God for, ask him for favor. Favor is very essential. Favor is God's gift. Bible says that Jesus increased in favor with God and with man. When you are in favor with God, doors will open for you. When you are in favor with man, doors will also open for you. Jesus had an effective ministry. Moses also had favor, he did not struggle. Joshua, Samuel, Esther, Daniel, Joseph, Paul, David, whatever, all those men and women of God in the Bible, they operated under God's favor to be able to achieve outstanding success and breakthrough in the area of their ministry and in their life. Child of God, favor can lift you up. Favor can decorate you. Favor can change your story. Favor can distinguish you. Favor can set you apart. Joseph was how many in their family? But he was the one who wore a coat of many colors. Even as a youth, he was favored in his family. His father favored him exceedingly. God's hand was also upon him. Favor will do for you in a second, in a minute second, what hard work cannot do. You can toil and sweat, and toil and sweat for decades, but you will not be able to accomplish what favor can. For example, the bricklayer who, who builds a house, it could build 30 houses in a year. And if the hand of God is not upon his life or he does not have favor, he will not even build one for himself. He will just be building for people. And he must have put in a lot of hard works to build in several, several houses. But it is the favor of God that makes the difference. 
Some gather and it scatters because there is no faith. Why some gather very little and they use that little to amount to much? I tell you that you see cases of people who earn millions of naira and yet after the, 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 before the end of the month, they go to their driver to beg for money. That Joe was giving us an example like that. So it is because the favor of God is absent. When favor is there, life will be easy. Things will be easy. God will do for you. You will achieve in a minute, in a minute second, with favor, what hard work cannot get. It's time to ask God for divine favor for this nation. It's time to ask God for divine favor in our country. It's time for us to pray because favor can attract goodwill. Favor can attract. Favor brings unsolicited benefits. Favor is like a shining crown upon the head of a man. It compels people to associate with him. It compels people to associate with him. David experienced favor and he confessed it in Psalm 103 verse 4. Because everywhere David went, he experienced favor, he experienced kindness. He talked about the loving kindness and the tender mercies of God. People were helping him. Even wives were helping him defeat their husband. Nabal and Abigail. Favor is essential. Favor is necessary. So your light shining for men to see is exactly the will of God. It's what will glorify God and it's what will make him happy according to Matthew 5.16. The Bible makes us know in Daniel chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 that Daniel, then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, A thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, we all know that Daniel was among those three or four Hebrew boys that were captured and were taken to captivity and were trained specially in the land of Babylon. So he was brought before the king in Daniel chapter 5. And the king was asking him, whom, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry, I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the God is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Meaning that the king recognized the fact that Daniel has the light of God. I told you that whenever the light of God is in your life, whenever the light of God comes, according to Isaiah 60 that we have read, as I, I arise and shine, it means that God is God's special hand is on you. And when God's special hand is on you, it means that you are experiencing favor, divine favor or uncommon favor. You are experiencing it from God. So the king was telling Daniel, said, I know that you have understanding, you have excellent wisdom. Favor can be defined as an act of kindness. Favor can be defined as an act of kindness. It allows people to obtain those things that they normally or ordinarily did not qualify for. Makes people to receive without asking. You just appear in an office and people start asking you, what can I do for you? They schedule you on an appointment without you even asking for one. They open the doors for you to see the king, the big ones, the president, the people in position, without you even making an effort. It is an unsolicited kind of favor when you didn't ask for Sometimes it is an undeserved kindness. Favor, you can call favor to be an undeserved kindness. You see people cry and say, hey, 
I don't know what I did do, but they blessed me, they favored me, or God shined his light upon me. Amen. So favor can be said, it is unsolicited, it can be undeserved. But it's a kindness that is shown to one. To one. And I t told you earlier on that when the light of God is shining upon you, then it means the special hand of God is upon you to bring favor to you. And I pray that as you listen to the sound of my voice, that the light of God will shine upon you and special favor will come upon you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In times like this, in this country, we need favor. We need favor. We need favor to be protected, favor to be saved. We need grace. We need the favor of God to turn things around for us. And even though things are topsy top vain, I like the song in my spirit that I can see everything turning around. Everything turning around. Everything turning around for my good. Things will turn around for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. As you shout it loud, amen, things will turn around for your good. Amen. Things will turn around for the good of Nigeria. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So favor is a time for grace, is a time for divine ability to perform certain things that are beyond human ability to receive certain help that are beyond human ability. Favor usually open the doors for outstanding success, for supernatural breakthrough. Favor opens the door to things that ordinarily that you cannot get on your own. So you can call favor the key. You can call favor the door opener. You can call favor success, the unmerited success. You can call favor supernatural breakthrough. There's hardly anything that you cannot have in a particular area of your life if you have the divine favor of God. No matter the area of your life, once the favor of God is in operation, you will see that nothing, you will not lack anything. Even as a pastor, you can operate in almost the fivefold ministry. Round. You can operate around. Why? Because the hand of God is upon you. The hand of God is upon you and the divine favor of God is at work in your life. When favor is at work in your life, you don't struggle for anything. You see people struggling to make it happen. But the divine favor of God makes it easy for them. Favor makes it easy for a man to be an achiever, an effortless achiever. Child of God, you need that favor to move on as we approach the end of this year. As we are, we are this year that summer look like a, a child with epilepsy. Today the year is well, tomorrow, even academically everything is a mess. You need the favor of God to be extraordinary. And like I told you before, it's still in this kind of year that some people are building houses, some are buying cars in this kind of year that some people could barely have to eat. It is the divine favor of God. When you come in contact with divine favor, it changes your struggle. It takes away struggle. It makes things to happen easily. For people who have outstanding supernatural breakthrough, do you think it's by their effort? It is by the, the, the favor of God. If there is one thing you should ask God for, if there is one thing you should pray for, child of God, pray for the favor of God, the uncommon favor of God. Jesus had it. David had it. Daniel also had it. And that was why, why he was in the lions, then the lions couldn't eat him. The three Hebrew boys had the divine favor of God, and that's why they could not burn in the fairy furnace. Solomon had divine favor. That was why, in spite of the fact that he was a child of compromise, he still had wisdom that surpasses all understanding. If there is one thing you should ask God for, ask him for favor. 
Favor is very essential. Favor is God's gift. Bible says that Jesus increased in favor with God and with man. When you are in favor with God, doors will open for you. When you are in favor with man, doors will also open for you. Jesus had an effective ministry. Moses also had favor. He did not struggle. Joshua, Samuel, Esther, Daniel, Joseph, Paul, David, whatever, all those men and women of God in the Bible, they operated under God's favor to be able to achieve outstanding success and breakthrough in the area of their ministry and in their life. Child of God, favor can lift you up. Favor can decorate you. Favor can change your story. Favor can distinguish you. Favor can set you apart. Joseph was how many in their family? But he was the one who wore a coat of many colors. Even as a youth, he was favored in his family. His father favored him exceedingly. God's hand was also upon him. Favor will do for you in a second, in a minute second, what hard work cannot do. You can toil and sweat, and toil and sweat for decades, but you will not be able to accomplish what favor can. For example, the bricklayer who, who builds a house, it could build 30 houses in a year. And if the hand of God is not upon his life or he does not have favor, he will not even build one for himself. He will just be building for people. And he must have put in a lot of hard works to build in several, several houses. But it is the favor of God that makes the difference. Some gather and it scatters because there is no favor. Why some gather very little and they use that little to amount to much? I tell you that you see cases of people who earn millions of naira, and yet after the the the, the before the end of the month they go to their driver to beg for money. That Joe was giving us an example like that. So it is because the favor of God is absent. When favor is there, life will be easy. Things will be easy. God will do for you. You will achieve in a minute, in a minute second, with favor, what at work cannot get. It's time to ask God for divine favor for this nation. It's time to ask God for divine favor in our country. It's time for us to pray because favor can attract goodwill. Favor can attract. Favor brings unsolicited benefits. Favor it's like a shining crown upon the head of a man. It compels people to associate with him. It compels people to associate with him. David experienced favor and he confessed it in Psalm 103 verse 4. Because everywhere David went, he experienced favor, he experienced kindness. He talked about the loving kindness and the tender mercies of God. People were helping him. Even wives were helping him defeat their husband. Nabal and Abigail. Favor is essential. Favor is necessary. David went on and grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. And Iram, king of Tao, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons. And they built David and out. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. I just read 2 Samuel chapter 5 from verse 10 to 12 to us. And this story is to buttress the fact that King David had favor. So much so that kings from other towns, other countries, they built a house for him. They not only built the house, they brought all the materials that were needed and all the workers that were needed to also build for him. This same king of Tyre also did the same for David's son Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, you will see that 
king Iram of Tyre also sent his servant unto Solomon, for he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father. For Iram was ever a lover of David. So the love and the favor that David got from Iram also extended to his son Solomon. Jesus also was a recipient of this kind of divine favor. Nobles from distant land became uninvited and they blessed him generously. They gave him gold, frankincense, and mark. And I pray for you as you listen to the sound of my voice that God will favor you and that you will become a magnetic that will attract favor from all other areas of your life. People will begin to do you good. Say amen. amen. They will begin to favor you. Amen. Whether you ask or you do not ask, favor will just come to you. And there are certain things that can facilitate favor, that can make favor to just come to you. There are certain things that can propel favor. And one of these things is exactly like I have said in Psalm 102. Psalm 102 verse 13. When I told you that, I, I read to you that it is the set time that I shall arise and have mercy on Zion for it's the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time to favor her. So, when God arises on your behalf, God shall arise and have mercy. Number one, when God arises on your behalf. That means favor is coming your way. God shall arise and have mercy. Number two, when God shows mercy. When God shows mercy, because he said in his word, he says he will show mercy on whom he will show mercy. He will show compassion on whom he will show compassion. So Psalm 102 verse 13 is still at work. First, God will arise. So when God arises on your behalf, favor will come to you. Two, when God shows you mercy. When God shows you mercy, favor, unprecedented favor, unmerited favor, unsolicited favor, will begin to find their way to your doorstep. And then in that same Psalm 102 verse 13 also said, for ye, the set time. So number three, when it is the set time, when it is the appointed time, when it is the hour of divine visitation, the heavens will open for you and God will smile favor on you. And what, it was, what was difficult for you to achieve in time past will become very easy. And because you have supernatural backing, because the set time for your favor has come, Child of God, as you listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to say that my set time for favor has come. Today is my set time for favor. I shall no longer be limited. This is my set time for favor. I must be favored. Whether the devil likes it or not, Psalm 102 verse 13 will work for me. So number four reason, or number four way that you can facilitate or bring favor your way, it's when the light of God comes upon you, according to Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3 that I read for us. I said the light of God will come. And you know when light comes, darkness disappears. Everybody likes light. Everybody wants to associate with light. Nobody likes darkness. Light attracts evil flies. This is uh, incense. Light will not allow cockroaches to hide around the corner. So bad things will go away when there is light automatically good things will begin to come. So when your light comes, or when the glory of God comes upon you, when God focuses his glory upon you, and when naturally things that should have been easy becomes, uh, should, things that should have been difficult becomes easy, it is because that light has dispelled darkness. And now you are experiencing the light of God. So child of God, Whenever you experience the light of God, when the light of God comes upon you, when you get to a point where you accept Jesus Christ into your life as your personal Savior, His light will be risen upon you. As your system will begin to work in your life, and then you will see favor come your way. Favor can also come, and it can also in where, uh, abide with you 
when the anointing of God upon your life increases, when you spend time in prayer, you spend time in fellowship, you spend time in evangelism, you spend time in worship, in counseling, in doing the things of God, favor will begin to come your way because the glory of God has come upon you. Remember the ark of God. When the ark of God went to the house of Obedidom, what happened to Obedidom? The ark is the presence of God. So when you begin to spend time in the presence of God, you will begin to carry the presence of God. And when you carry the presence of God, automatically favor will locate you. Obedidom became wealthy, very rich. It was blessed. Why? Because the presence of God was with him. So when the anointing of God increases upon your life, when the glory of God increases upon your life, you will begin to shine and you begin to operate under God's grace, under God's timing for your life. Number six, grace, which is your merited favor, can multiply true spiritual knowledge. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, that grace and peace will be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, Jesus Christ. So meaning that if you have the knowledge of God, you study God's word, you know God's word, you know about God, you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, then you can experience grace and peace. And when grace and peace is multiplied unto you, increase will come your way. Increase will come your way. Number seven, true righteousness and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is true, when it's not magumago or borrowed, it's not the one you went to wash eye or wash or wash head to be able to see face vision for people. When it is the true anointing of the Holy Spirit, then you will attract favor. You will begin to attract favor, supernatural favor. Favor from all walks of life will begin to locate you. People will begin to compete to do you good. In Psalm 45, verse 7, and even 12, we were told that Jesus loved righteousness. He hated iniquity. And that's why he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellow. Lastly, divine favor can come to you when you make a deliberate and a persistent demand for it through the Holy Spirit. Child of God, if you are there and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you cannot experience favor. I want us to look at our life and begin to determine where we have gone wrong, what has made favor elude us, why are we not, you know, manifesting favor in our life, and then we will pray. Jesus was exalted because he loved righteousness and he hated wickedness. Today I receive grace to do the same. In the mighty name of Jesus, every mark of this favor on me, I raise it through the blood of Jesus. I raise it through the blood of Jesus. I raise it by the Lamb of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, surround me with favor. Surround me with favor, even as you surround the righteous with favor. According to Psalm 5 verse 12, help me, Lord, to live in righteousness and holiness so that I can daily enjoy your favor in my life. I command every barrier to my favor to be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I enter into every opportunity created by God's favor for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord my God, favor distinguished Joseph in his father's house. Favor distinguished Joseph in Potiphar's house. Favor distinguished Joseph in Pharaoh's palace. Father, let me be distinguished among my people by favor in the name of Jesus. Let me be compassed about with favor as with a shield. I receive favor. I receive the tender love of God. I am successful in every endeavor of my life. Father, exalt my own. Exalt my own by your favor. Exalt my own as I receive courage, strength, and favor to turn my story to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. By the hand of God upon me, I shall not be stranded. I shall not be frustrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord of glory, move me from labor to favor. In the name of Jesus, I decree 
in the name of Jesus that I have left the school of struggle and suffering in the mighty name of Jesus. I have graduated to the school of favor in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, wherever I go, favor will follow me. Favor will be my portion. People will compete to bless me and do me good. Strangers will build my houses in the mighty name of Jesus. Kings will come to the rising of my money in the name of Jesus. I shall suck the breast of queens in the name of Jesus. The Gentiles will bring their wealth to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your favor be upon everything that I lay my hands to do in your glory and in your honor in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, single me heart with your anointing of favor in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your love and your care and your favor that endured forever over my life and my family and my ministry. I receive on my head like David did a crown of loving kindness and tender mercies in the name of Jesus. From this moment, I make a decree that people will tenderly and mercifully attend to me in the name of Jesus. They will compete to do me good in the name of Jesus. Like Joseph, I shall receive a coat of many color in the name of Jesus. I will be attractive and be admired by people wherever I go and they will bless me in the name of Jesus. I shall eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus. This year, I boldly and I loudly confess that I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am highly favored in the name of Jesus. Thou uncommon favor of God, fall upon me right now in the name of Jesus. Father, set me on high, decorate my life by your favor in the name of Jesus. Let the great favor of God locate me. Let it identify me. Let it lift me up in the name of Jesus. This year, as the Lord liveth and my soul liveth, I shall be a spectacular achiever through God's favor. In the name of Jesus, every good thing of life be attracted towards me by divine favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, let your favor be my identity. Lord, let your favor be my guide. Let your favor follow me wherever I go. Let your light shine upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, I thank you because you perfume my life with favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we have a lot to pray tonight. We have a lot to pray tonight. We're going to look at some scriptures. And we will start from Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. The Bible says that Jesus grew both in height and in wisdom, and he was loved by God and by all who knew him. That's the New Living Translation. It just says, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and with man. So we have to pray for God to increase us in wisdom, in stature, in favor, with God and with man. We have to pray for God to uplift us and to cause his countenance to shine upon us. And let us also look at First Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. First Samuel, if you see it, you can read it, you can flash it on the screen. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 26. Meanwhile, as young Samuel grew taller, he also continued to gain favor with the Lord and with the people. And the child Samuel grew on, and he was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Samuel also found favor with the Lord. You know, the first one was Jesus who grew in favor, and the second scripture was Samuel. So let's look at Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Start praying for favor. O God, 
I were you, I will start praying for favor. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers have told us what work that did us in their days, in the time of old. You drove out the pagan nation and gave all the land to our ancestors. You crushed their enemies, setting out. You crushed their enemies, setting them out. You cast them out. And in verse 3, NLT says, They did not conquer the land with their sword. It was not with their own strength that, that gave them victory. It was by your mighty power that they succeeded. It was because you favored them and you smiled on them. So Psalm 144, Psalm 44 verse 1 to 3 talks about the favor of God upon the Israelites. How God drove out their enemies and gave them the land. Favor of God upon the Israelites. Psalm 5 verse 12 says that God will surround us with favor as a shield. God will surround us with favor as a shield. So, child of God, it's time to start praying for favor. It is very important to pray for favor. It is only God that can favor us. And it's only God that can grant us favor. Nigeria needs favor. We all need favor. We need the favor that comes from above. We need the favor that comes from God. Daniel chapter 1 verse 9. We need the favor that comes from God. I need the favor. I don't know about you. Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 verse 9 that now God had given the chief official great respect for Daniel. King James says now God had brought Daniel in favor and in tender love with the prince of the union. So Daniel also experienced favor. Psalm 30, Psalm 30 verse 5 and by verse 7, somebody opened Psalm 30, Psalm 30, verse 5, verse 5, Psalm 30, verse 5. Are we there now? Psalm 30, verse 5 talks about the Father. His anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. And then verse 7 of it says, When I was prosperous, I said, Nothing can stop me now. That was the favor of God. It was the favor of God. In my prosperity, I said, I shall not be moved. God's anger may last for a moment, but His favor is life. God's favor is life. Psalm 30, verse 5. As I said, we pain may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. These are scriptures I want us to look at to pray sincerely for favor. Favor is very important in the life of a man. If you have been going through a period of deprivation, going through a period of hardship, you have been going through a period of <coughs> starvation, just know that this is your time for favor. That's why Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It talks about the goodness of God, the mercy of God. They will follow us, they will locate us, and they will be with us forever. Psalm 102 verse 13, I said it several times when we were reading when we were, we were reading the word and sharing it, it was our test that the set time to favor Zion is now. Look at Psalm 89 verse 17. Psalm 89 verse 17. The Bible says that you are their glorious strength. Our power is based on your favor. God is our glorious strength, is the glory of our strength. And his favor is the own. And in thy favor, our own shall be exalted. That means it is God that gives us favor. And it is his favor that brings promotion. Proverbs 11, 27. Proverbs 11, 
27. Let's also look at Proverbs 12, 2. So anyone you see is fine. Proverbs 11, 27. Open your Bibles and be involved. Proverbs 11, 27. If you search for good, you will find favor. But if you search for evil, evil will find you. God is in support of good. Search for good so that you can find good and not free, and not evil. Then Proverbs 12 verse 2. The Lord approves of those who are good, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. If you want favor of God, you should be a good man. That's why the King James Version of Proverbs 12 to say, good man obtained favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will be condemned. So beloved, favor is divine. Favor is from God. Favor cannot be exempted. Favor cannot be taken away. Favor cannot they do without favor is from God. So I want us to pray. Say, Lord Almighty, I thank you for favor that I have been enjoying since I've been brought into this life. I pray for that same favor upon our country. Father, let your name bring favor to our land in the name of Jesus. Father, I give glory to your name for your fountain of favor that is available to me and my family in Christ Jesus. Lord, let me drink of this fountain every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Perfume my life with favor. Make me a blessing to my generation. Father, Lord in heaven, Jesus was exalted. He loved righteousness and he hated wickedness. Today I receive grace to do the same in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to do the same in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to do the same. Begin to ask God. Begin to pray.